Happy weekend everyone! I had promised you a while back that I would come back and do one more look or at least for the time being one more look with the Tom Ford Body Heat Quad because I wanted to show you how this shade would layer with one of Pat's Astros because I had that look in my mind that I couldn't really stop thinking about and I haven't actually done it yet so I thought you know what I'm not really in a hurry today we can just chit chat a bit and I can do this look for you it's not going to be a super complicated look but in case you were curious here is your chance. I'm taking Glow Last by Auric as usual and you know I'm doing the usual with that. I actually like applying the um, Glow Last more with a brush than with my sponge. As I mentioned in one of my previous videos I've been enjoying using my Real Techniques sponge again to apply my concealer and my foundation in particular but um, the Glow Last I actually think works better for whatever reason, maybe because it has a thicker consistency with my brush. And I didn't do it on camera, but I did test it, um, you know, myself. And I applied half of my face with uh, the sponge and half of my face with the brush. And there really wasn't that much difference. So it was really in my head and I'm just, you know, going through a phase now where I'm enjoying using my um, sponge. But that's not because I'm getting a better finish with the sponge compared to the brushes. Also, one of the reasons for doing that is that I have a bunch of backups of these sponges because I used to buy them almost in bulk from iHerb a while back. They would sell these um, little sets of four of these brushes and I would go and buy them every now and then when they are on sale. So I think I have about seven or eight of these still in my backup drawer and I haven't really been using them like at all <laughs> for the past like year or so. so ever since I started using uh, Japanese Fude brushes for my base products and I think it's a shame because I do actually really like the finish with the sponges. Next I'm taking the Estee Lauder Double Wear Light Foundation. Honestly when Alice gave me this foundation I thought that by now I would have finished it but that thing just seems pretty full. Alice, how much of this did you actually use because I have the feeling that like half of it is still in there. Which, you know, don't get me wrong, I don't mind at all because I really like this foundation. But I'm surprised how long it's taking for it to finish. Because I really thought that after a few uses it will be done. But nope, it's still there, it's still going strong. Speaking of strong, I have to tell you, I might cave and buy that stupid Blushing Delights palette together with Negligee lipstick in the near future with a far less significant discount so just so you know I might end up having that stupid thing of a palette much sooner than expected because I, I just really desire those blushes I just everyone's been raving about the actual product inside the palette literally not one single person was like oh my gosh what beautiful packaging i can't wait to display it on my vanity i wouldn't think displaying that like blushing delights palette would be the worst thing in the world because i do have a couple of things on display i have my whole shrine on display i don't keep any of my patnograd palettes in drawers they are all on display so i wouldn't really mind having that uh, palette what bothers me is the lack of thought and the lack of attention to detail when it comes to the packaging and the fact that apparently it was taped around and a lot of pa people um, tried to remove the tape and it actually tore off the um, paper packaging on the palette itself. If that happened to me, I would spontaneously burst into flames. I would be barking mad. <laughs> but as it is, everyone's been raving about the actual product inside. I am taking the Flawless Airbrush Finish Powder from Charlotte Tilbury. I've been using this and I've been trying to decide whether I like it and I still cannot really make up my mind. And the reason I am so conflicted about it is because on initial application I feel like it looks really nice, it's very blurring. I don't mind that it mattifies my skin a little bit because my skin always gets a little bit oilier throughout the day so, you know, the glow will come back. What bothers me is that I feel like throughout the day this dries out my skin and what's even more bizarre you may have noticed that I never put powder like underneath my eyes because if I put powder underneath my eyes it will like all the moisture out so I never put powder there but somehow this powder just like travels 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 and then somehow it ends up underneath my eyes and in the end of the day my eyes look my under eyes look absolutely abysmal like shriveled and everything and I do not have this um, experience with my hourglass finishing powder which is my favorite one 
I just far prefer the finish of that powder over the course of the day. I feel like this one looks okay in the beginning of the day, but not so much at the end of the day, but I'm still testing it out. I'm going to take my uh, cream bronzer from Milk Makeup, by the way. So I know Alice really likes this powder, but I feel like Alice and I still have slightly different skin types. I think her skin is slightly oilier than mine. I do tend to become more oily throughout the day for sure. My skin doesn't get drier over the course of the day, it gets um, oilier. But it's this very like contradictory thing where some parts of my face actually tend to become drier depending on what kind of products I use. Like now it looks fine. I think you can also see that it really nicely like blurred my pores, especially in this area of my face where I have like real craters, not pores, they're just fucking craters. Uh, but like, I don't know why it travels underneath my eyes. For blush today, I'm going to take another one of my Daniel Sandler watercolor bl blushes that came in the set that I purchased a while back. Unlike the um, other shade that I have shown, I think, more often on my channel, this one is more of like this bubblegummy pink color. So I'm just going to work it like this on the back of my hand and then use light stippling motions to apply it onto my skin. I feel like it works really well that way as to not over apply the color if you apply it straight on your cheeks. And how beautiful and subtle it is once it goes on to the skin because it's not like an obnoxious bubblegum pink, it's just like a nice rosy flush on the skin. For me this color, especially this shade of bubblegum pink, is not one that particularly suits my skin tone, but I think it would look really nice with today's look and I don't use this pink shade as often as I do the peach one, which is my favorite of the two. I'm also going to take the highlighter that comes in the set, it's this beautiful beige color. This shade very much melts with my own skin tone, so you can just kind of see this little sheen on my cheekbones without really too much color to it, but I actually really like it. I'm going to do the same by the way, I'm just going to uh, stipple it on the back of my hand and then use stippling motions and a smaller brush, this is the mini base from Sonia G, to apply it onto my cheekbones. As you can see, it doesn't really have much base color because the base color is pretty much my skin tone, but it gives the most beautiful, natural glow on your cheekbones. I think if you're someone who especially struggles with um, texture on your cheeks, you're really going to like these because they have this like smoothening effect to the skin. I'm pretty sure I rave about these uh, Daniel Sandler products every time I use them in a video because I'm so impressed each and every time. Okay, so for the look today, um, it's going to be like I said, like super fucking simple. I'm basically going to take my uh, Jumbo Blender from Sonia G, I'm going to go into this champagne shade and I'm going to apply this everywhere. Starting here from my lid and then blending it upwards towards the crease and even upwards from the crease. We're going for like this sort of editorial-ish type of look where you have like a very shimmery shade blended all the way up towards your brow bone. And because this is a champagne, you could literally take it all the way up to your brow bone if you're someone who has a little bit less space between your eye and your um, eyebrows. I have a little bit too much, so I think for me it would be just like an overkill if I would put the shade all the way underneath my brows. I really like this shade. It's a very subtle shade, but it still has a really, really beautiful sheen to it. I'm going to intensify the sheen just a little bit here on my lids by applying it with my finger. These shades are not going to go from zero to hero because they're not meant to be um, very shimmery and very metallic. Hey Nicolache! And now for the most exciting step, which will be the layering of an astral. Because like I said in my previous videos, I feel like these shades from Tom Ford have a formula that is very, very, very reminiscent of the Blitz formula from Pat McGrath, just a little bit more lightweight and less metallic when you apply it over a glitter glue. Uh, and because of that, I think they would look beautifully layered together with her astrals. And there is one astral in particular that I feel like is going to look so beautiful with this specific eyeshadow. I think actually a lot of them would look beautiful, but this specific astral has just been stuck in my head ever since I uh, saw the Tom Ford quad. And that is the astral that comes from the first Bridgerton palette, actually. So I'm just going to take like a pretty generous amount of this shade. And I don't think I'm going to use a glitter glue. I think this is going to stick to um, the champagne shade pretty, pretty well. And I'm just going to layer it over top. 
And I'm just really, really curious what's going to happen if I spray my brush. So I'm going to apply a little bit of that Astro on the same brush on which I had the champagne shade. I'm going to spritz with Fix Plus. And then I'm going to apply it especially right here in the center of the lid, just so it's extra shiny. Whew, that's beautiful. Oh my gosh. I actually think that this might be the safer choice for how to apply the astral over this shade because otherwise you might get a little bit of fallout. Before I got the Bridgerton 2 palette I would have just applied the champagne shade from the Tom Ford quad into my inner corners and called it a day. However, now that I have the Bridgerton 2 palette and I have a mild obsession with the mint shade, the shade there in Dandy, uh, I'm going to pop that into my inner corners. So we basically have this little like light pastel moment going on on the lids and being complemented by this mint shade into the inner corners. To finish off the look on my lower lash line I'm going to run the tiniest amount of this uh, taupe shade but like really the tiniest amount just to give a bit of definition and try to concentrate that here underneath my uh, lashes. And honestly, you could skip completely the lower lash line. I think it would look bomb. You could just apply the uh, champagne shade from the... <laughs> and honestly, you could stop um, and not apply anything on your lower lashes. Uh, in fact, maybe it would have been better if I hadn't applied anything on my lower lashes because I have small eyes and when I put something this dark on my lower lash line, my eyes tend to look a little bit smaller. But uh, at the same time, I have this urge to put something on my lower lash line because otherwise I feel like the look is incomplete. And that is basically going to be the eye look. I'm going to finish that off with like generous amounts of mascara, a lot of curling of my lashes and a lot of applying my eyeshadow primer so that they hold a curl because with a look like this, you really want to have a nice fluffy lash. I just looked into my other mirror and the sparkles were so beautiful. We're doing the close-up of the sparkles. So, can you see how gorgeous this is? My camera can't even focus, it is so sparkly. I really love how the look turned out. I hope you did too. I finished it off with something super easy on the lips. This is the shade Brunette Ambition from the H&M Cream Lipstick line, which is your classic like browny pinky nude lipstick. Let me know what you thought about the look. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I don't know that there is so much more to demo with the, the Tom Ford Quad, so it will probably just come back in like Shop My Stash videos. I wish you all a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very, very soon. Bye!